Okay, so uh, thank you, Tom, and thank you, everyone, for not being on the beach, or not yet. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be the last part in uh, the death by PowerPoint, which uh, you have to go through today. So uh, what I'd like to do is uh, to share with you our experience at Naville in the French-speaking part of Switzerland uh, as a retailer, as a press retailer, trying to cope with the decline of press. So very uh, quickly, uh, beforehand, just to give you a flavor who we are, what we do. Uh, we are part of the LS distribution group. We have both retail and distribution activities back there in Geneva and Lausanne. Uh, we are the only press distributor uh, on that uh, territory, and we operate 180 stores. Uh, we have several brands, uh, the, the international brands such as Relay, which is well known, and also strong local brands such as Neville. Um, we represent 40% of uh, market share, press retail, in, in, in the French-speaking part of Switzerland, with only 15% in terms of number of stores. Uh, we have 3,000 titles, and um, we operate, we, we, we serve 90,000 customers every day, which is not bad for the tiny uh, Romandie, uh, French-speaking part of Switzerland. So the context, uh, I'm afraid we've been through that kind of chart uh, all day, but this is what we, we lived in the past decade. Uh, as you see here, uh, we witnessed a decline of press sales by more than a third, so 35% of our sales just are gone. So the question is, what do you do when you have to face such, such a situation? So we looked at that and we said two things. First one is uh, press is our DNA. We are and we want to remain the reference press retailer. Uh, but to do that, we need, and that's the second point, we need to remain profitable, we need to stay alive. So how did we do that? Trying to um, encompass uh, our action plan into uh, two words, optimize and diversify. Uh, that's what you see on the, on the chart here. I'm not going to talk on what is on the, the, the far, uh, the, the, the right-hand side here, but we're also doing a brand new type of retail activities uh, with food services, restaurant, as a franchisee of uh, international brands. I'm going to focus on the left-hand side, which is uh, what we're doing with the existing Neville and Relay stores. Uh, the first action I would like to talk about is what we call the game project. It's really directly linked to press and it's about assortment and merchandising. Certains titres que je reçois ne se vendent pas. J'aimerais bien mais qui a acheté plus de presse. La presse, elle me prend beaucoup de temps au quotidien. Mes clients me demandent souvent où trouver un site. Et maintenant, je vous propose de découvrir ensemble les différentes étapes de la démarche Kim et ses outils. Le but est de réaliser un diagnostic commercial, les plus et les moins, optimiser l'assortiment de votre point de vente et réaliser un plan merchandising sur mesure. Est-ce que cela vous intéresse Oui, ça m'intéresse. Je vais d'abord vous présenter vos indicateurs clés, puis vos performances par famille, et enfin, voici vos tops et vos flops. La construction de l'assortiment se base sur une analyse scientifique du réseau roman. Au départ, l'idée est simple, c'est d'analyser les points de vente performants, d'observer les règles, de comprendre pourquoi ils fonctionnent, de les optimiser, et puis finalement de modéliser le tout. Notre outil GAP permet d'optimiser l'assortiment presse de votre point de vente en supprimant les titres non vendeurs, en implantant des titres potentiellement vendeurs, tout cela en fonction de votre espace à disposition. Désormais, comment faire pour mettre en valeur votre assortiment Nous avons créé un outil qui permet de modéliser un plan merchandising personnalisé pour votre point de vente, l'outil Space Press. Pour cela, tout d'abord, nous rentrons les informations de votre point de vente, puis la configuration de votre mobilier. À partir de ces informations, le logiciel va déterminer la place à consacrer à chaque famille dans vos linéaires. Pour que cela soit pratique et concret pour vous, nous vous proposons une vision en 3D de votre point de vente. 
Monsieur Georges, oui. je vais vous montrer le plan merchandising press. Oui. Vous savez qu'on a retravaillé tout l'assortiment, oui. on l'a validé. Donc pour ce faire, on, on aura besoin simplement de bien positionner les titres ensemble. Et ça, je vais vous montrer comment on va faire. Mm -hmm. D'accord oui. Alors, je vous ai quand même mis, Monsieur Georges, oui. tout ce qui se change oui. toutes les semaines. Oui. C'est important que ce qui se change toutes les semaines, ce soit en, ce soit en première gorge. Vous voyez, ceux-là, c'est ceux qui s'avirent et ça, c'est vraiment des plus petits. Mmh. Ça, ils ont entre 3 et 7 ans, ceux-là, ils ont au-dessus de 7 ans, d'accord Après, on a regroupé toute la presse masculine. Ça va très bien avec l'automoto. Une des règles principales du merchandising est de nous ranger les titres en vertical. Ils seront beaucoup plus vendeurs, beaucoup plus visibles et vous gagnerez beaucoup plus de temps pour la mise en place. Ça s'est très bien passé, hein, donc euh, Sophie est venue et puis donc on a tout mis en branle bas de combat, on a tout sorti et on a tout remis d'une manière donc euh, étudiée, donc tous les, les différentes descentes de produits. Ça c'est certain, on a, fait, on a fait mieux avec des, des fois des belles ventes euh, euh, qui, qui, qui étaient plutôt rares avant. Oui alors l'effet sur le chiffre d'affaires il a été immédiat et puis on a grandi aussi l'espace, l'espace d'exposition. Donc là, on a vu euh, le chiffre augmenter de 62% exactement. Donc ça a été une belle initiative de notre part. Ah oui, 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 absolument. Ça, sans aucune hésitation. D'ailleurs, on va faire d'autres points de vente et on va se baser justement sur ce point de vente qui était le premier. On s'y retrouve mieux pour faire la mise en place, euh, pour retrouver les étoiles, le deuxième rappel, c'est vraiment plus facile. Désormais, les clients trouvent plus facilement les magazines et on achète même de nouveau. Là, ils, ils savaient tout de suite où est-ce qu'ils pouvaient s'orienter dès qu'ils avaient besoin d'un titre. So, uh, as you see, the, the game tries to uh, reverse. Maybe the, the, the way the industry uh, historically looked at the, at the business and we're really trying to start back from the, from the customer, from the reader in the store. It's been a, a small revolution at Neville. We have a dedicated organization and then dedicated IT tools, but we're very happy with the results because those POS which have gone through the, the, the process, which have been gamed, as we say, uh, we're able in those POAs to hold back between 2 to 4% of the decline. So that's not bad. Um, also a couple of comments, uh, seeing press as a retailer. Uh, it's obvious, but of course, staff is expensive and, and rent is expensive. So a couple of comments uh, along those lines is uh, we can't afford to manipulate uh, an issue uh, every day. We have to be able to manipulate it once when it's delivered and once when we collect the unsold. Also, uh, occupying the shelf just for visibility, using the, the POS as a free media is no longer possible. On the shelf, you, you need to find titles we have which have a fair chance of being sold. Draws, as you saw in the game uh, video, a draw have to take into account not only sales history, of course, but also the space available in the POS. And since we do that at Neville, we really reduce a lot of frustration from the stores. Then, uh, not focusing on press, but other products. So my, my message is maybe if we want to survive as a good press retailer, we need to sell less press. Meaning we, we need to be able to have other sources of revenues if we want to stay alive. So of course, food and beverages on the go, especially in travel locations, uh, there's a strong demand. So we enlarged the assortments for those categories, gently but slowly uh, uh, removing, uh, reducing the shelf space for press. Uh, and you know the margins on coffee and bottled drinks. Uh, new product lines and services, you need to try really uh, every, t every day uh, different type of, of product lines. Uh, some will work, some will not work. 
Here are a few examples of good successes. So headphones, uh, smartphone accessories, plugs, uh, reading glasses, sunglasses, uh, fashionable gifts, e-cigarettes, of course, and also services such as money transfer. So there's a lot of money going to Switzerland. There's also a lot of money going out of Switzerland, and we support that. Uh, services like Pudo, which is a pick-up and drop-off, and finally, gift cards. So all those are now really part of our assortment, uh, and they really belong to, to the kiosk model. And the last uh, point I went, wanted to, to show you is the new uh, Navil uh, store concept. Uh, we had a lot of object objectives when we started to uh, uh, rebuild our, our store concept. Of course, we rejuvenate our brand identity and logo, which was old. Surprise the customer, diversify our sources of revenues with new products, uh, also work on press, and increase the flexibility, uh, as, as uh, Charles Darwin was saying, responsiveness to change is key. Uh, this is what the stores looked like uh, up to a year ago, and let me show you how they look like now. Oops. So. So they look like, they, they look like that. Uh, that's the, 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 the new uh, Neville uh, concept. We call it Neville 2.0. Uh, as you see, we put a lot of uh, emphasis on, on press, and we try to, uh, to also to use press and to play uh, with press uh, for the new concept, meaning we use the merchandising of press to, uh, to, uh, uh, to help increase the readability of the flows, of the customer flows in the store, and we, we put the kids' press at the entrance next to the games and gifts and so on. And we put the uh, daily newspapers at the cash registers uh, because they're uh, traditionally uh, uh, destination buys. Of course, press is a fresh product. It's new every day or every week, so that legitimates our concept, uh, our promise, which is nouveau chaque jour, new every day. And we also uh, did create uh, new uh, animation and promotional tools in, uh, in the shelves. Results. Now, if we look at turnover, here you, you have uh, the evolution of turnover over the past decade. Uh, the, the, the orange line is press, as we saw earlier, so 35 of the turnover uh, uh, went away. And within the same period of time, uh, the total turnover increased by almost 30%, so that the uh, importance of press in the mix went down from 18% to 9% today. So press is 9% of our sales today. In terms of gross margin, gross margin also for press, that's the orange line, fell by the same uh, uh, amount, of course, uh, 35%. And within the same decade, um, total uh, margin was fairly stable, which means that in our gross margin today, press accounts for 19%. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Uh, what I know is that we've been able to uh, compensate for every Swiss franc we've lost on press with some other products. So we're still, we're still here and we're still doing our best for, for press. This is going to be my, my conclusion and my last message. Uh, we talked about new concepts, new products, new services. That, that's fine and that's necessary. But what is more important when we talk about retail excellence is the quality of the store personnel. It's the the smile and the professionalism of the store personnel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.